Hoffman coding assigns variable length codes to characters based on their prevalence in the language. Suppose we want to store or transmit a message. Text is already digital, an alphabet after all is a finite set of discrete symbols. But computers represent everything as bits. A bit can be anything that has just two states, which we'll write as 0 and 1. And there are a variety of ways to convert an alphabet to bits. The simplest is to use the same number of bits for every character. Write down all the different characters you'll need, not just the letters, but spaces, punctuation, numerals, and any other symbols. I came up with 59 of them. Then just take the ceiling of log base 2. Wait, what? Just think of it this way. With one bit, we have only two possible codes, 0 or 1. Adding another bit doubles the number of codes. Duplicate them, then put a 0 in front of the first half, and a 1 in front of the second half. Repeat that as much as you need to. Duplicate, 0, 1. Until you have enough to cover all your characters. If the number of symbols you need falls between powers of 2, round up. And then design some cute emoji to use up any leftover codes. When every character uses the same number of bits, we call it a fixed-length code. We can visualize any binary code as a tree. In computer science, trees usually grow upside down. The root at the top, branches and leaves toward the bottom. When all the branches come in pairs, we call it a binary tree. We can label the left branches with zero, and all the right branches with one. Now each of our codes corresponds to a path, starting at the root and ending at a leaf labeled with the character that sequence of bits encodes. Fixed-length codes work fine, but not all characters in an alphabet are created equal. Whatever message we're writing, chances are it uses a lot more E's than Z's. What if we could vary the length of the codes so that more frequently used characters have shorter representations? Even in the 1830s, Samuel Morse knew that that would save time. The complication is that no code can be a prefix of any other code. Morse code really uses more than just the dot and dash. The intercharacter and interword gaps are critical. Otherwise, the words spaces and switch have exactly the same representation. Drawing the tree helps us ensure that no code is a prefix of any other. You can't have a leaf in the middle of a branch. Apart from saying that more frequent codes should be shorter, how do we come up with the codes? If I rank letters by their frequency in a typical text, I could represent the most frequent with one bit, the next with two bits, the next with three, and so on. But that produces a very skewed tree, which probably isn't ideal. In the 1950s, David A. Huffman published a simple algorithm for producing optimal variable length codes. It works like this. Start with a typical piece of text. We'll use a short phrase to keep this manageable. Step through one character at a time and keep a count. When you see a character more than once, like the O in now, add an extra mark to its tally. Next, rewrite the letters and their frequencies in order from lowest to highest. When the frequencies are equal, the order doesn't matter much, we'll just keep the order they appeared in the phrase. Now the fun begins. Take the top two and join them by adding their counts together. Then write a zero in front of the first one and a one in front of the second. From now on, this counts as a single joined letter with frequency two, so let's move it to its rightful place next to the other letter that appears twice. Do it again with the next two letters in the list. Soon you'll be joining letters with others that have already been joined. 
In that case, write a 0 in front of the first element, and a 1 in front of each code in the second element. You're finished when the list consists of one giant element whose frequency is the total size of the original phrase. The bookkeeping we did is the binary tree turned sideways. I recommend redrawing it neatly and verifying that the codes match. The Huffman code compresses text. Suppose we've represented these same eight letters with a fixed length code. How many bits would we use per character? Uh, sure, ceiling of log base 2 of 8, which is 3 bits. There we go. Now write the message using those codes. It takes 17 times 3, which is 51 bits in total. And here's the same message using the Huffman codes. It takes only 47 bits. So we saved 4 bits, even though the codes for some infrequent characters became longer. To apply the technique to larger pieces of text, we'll have to write a program. But first, a disclaimer. This is not authentic live coding. I designed, developed, tested, and debugged this program off-camera. We keep a tally of all 256 possible characters. The tally starts at 1 to ensure that all characters get coded, even if they don't appear in the text. Then we read the text to be analyzed from standard input. As long as some bytes were read, we take each byte and add one to it in the tally. Create a work list by pairing the count and the list of characters contributing to the count. Initially, that list is just one character. Next, keep track of a binary code for each of the 256 characters. As long as there's more than one thing in our work list, Grab the two smallest counts, call them left and right, and then for each character in the left component, put a zero in front of its binary code. For the characters in the right component, put a one out front. Add the counts and join the lists, and push that entry back into its proper place in the heap. Finally, print out each binary code with a human-readable representation of its character. We'll try it on the novel Emma by Jane Austen. Here's the code. Unused characters end up represented as 20-some bits, but the new line is 6 bits, and the lowercase e is just 3. Other common lowercase letters are 4 bits. Now to compress Emma using that code. Read the codes from standard input, and the text to compress as the first argument. Get ready to output one bit at a time using the bit out stream. Then, for each character, and each bit in that character's code, write true if that bit is one or false otherwise. The result is 516 kilobytes, where the original was almost 900k. So we squished it by 40 some percent. Here are a few questions for further discovery and discussion. Does it work to build a Huffman code from one text and use it to compress a different text? What happens if the two texts are in different languages? Is the 40% compression we achieved pretty good? Huffman is said to be an optimum code, but Wait a minute, Gzip does better? Why? Code is available on GitHub. Thanks for watching.